Hi, this is the fourth part to the course on consuming a REST API in Dart and Flutter. In previous video, we fetched a list of nodes and we displayed it in our app. Today, we're going to do a very similar thing, but now we are just going to fetch a single node. So just in order to demonstrate how this works, we're going to take the API key that we have in our application, go into our notes section, paste in an API key and click execute. And here we have a list of notes. So we can just copy one of these note IDs and go down here and then send in that note ID and send in the API key. And then we have the note here in question, but this note has a little bit more content than in our list action. So here in our list action, we have a note ID, title, create date time, and latest edit date time. And here we have all of that plus note content because that is going to be displayed in our note detail page. All right, so the first thing we should do is create an action in our service. So this is the service from our last video where we fetched a list of notes. And now we're going to do a very similar thing. So let me just copy this method because a good portion of the code is going to be the same. And now I'm going to paste it. And now it's not going to be a list of notes for listing, but it's going to be a note, maybe detail, or let's just call it note for now. And now in my models folder, I'm going to create a new model and just call it note. Right, and then here we're going to do a very similar thing as we did in our note for listing. So I'm just going to create a class called a note and I'm going to give it all of these properties that we have in note for listing. Just change the constructor name and also I'm going to add an additional parameter which is going to be the note content. And also I'm going to add it in the constructor over here too. All right, now let's go back to the notes service, import the note in question. And now http.get api plus slash notes and then we need to add a note id so what we're going to do over here is we're going to get the note id from a parameter in our function so let's just call this string note id and now we're going to send that note id like this we're going to add another slash and add plus note id and also let me rename this function to get note all right and now our code for decoding the response is going to be a little bit simpler since we are not iterating over a list but we're just taking one single note and then we are converting it from a map to an actual Dart object. So here we can keep this JSON data and we can remove these and these ones too. And now we have just a single note but we're going to swap out the note for a listing for just note and it seems I deleted this item property too but I'm going to create it again or actually what oh no this item was in the for loop so instead of the item we're just going to use JSON data all right so what I did over here is I made this request and when we get a successful response which is 200 as we mentioned we decode this raw string into a map. Now it's not a list of maps, but it's an actual map. So we don't have to iterate over the list, but we can directly access the JSON data as it is a map, as I said. And one more thing we need to add to our note is the note content. All right. So I think that that should be almost it. And again, this is not a list of notes for listing, but note. All right. And here we're just going to say note. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of code is just unnecessarily repeated, but for now, this is the most kind of beginner friendly way. And later on in the course, I'm going to show you how we can actually avoid this code repetition. All right, and one thing I forgot from the last video is to extract this JSON decoding logic into the models themselves. So what I mean by this is we should get rid of this code when we're decoding the JSON into an actual node for listing, and we should make a factory constructor and call it from JSON. So let me do that real quick. So I'm going to go into node for listing, and I'm going to make a factory constructor and call it from JSON. Uh, I think that this is correct syntax. Maybe I should put a note for listing 
dot from json yeah this is okay and in here we should just put in a map of a string and dynamic so this is the data type that we get from our json dot decode method once we are or actually no it's not oh yeah it's map so when we do json.decode, we get a list of maps of string dynamics. So let's just call this item. And now I'm just going to copy this code over here and paste it in over here. And instead of initializing this to a variable, I'm just going to return it. Okay. And now we don't need all of this code. We can just say note.fromjson or actually note for listing dot from json and put this into it and we can just put that over here so this already kind of reduces the clutter that we have in our service so if you didn't quite follow what i did here i just took the code for decoding our map into an actual dart object and made it a factory constructor so this way it's a little more expressive and it's a little cleaner so we should do that in our node class too so again a lot of code can just be copied over from the node for listing factory constructor and let's just go to node dart and do it like this and i'm just going to replace node for listing with just note and I need to add one more property, which is going to be note content. And it's not going to be JSON data, but item. So again, what we did here is pretty much the exact same thing we did with note for listing, but we just added one more property that we're getting from the API. So now we can go over here and say note.fromjson and just say JSON date. And just like that, our code seems a little bit cleaner. All right, so now that we have created the getNote method, we should actually use it. So let's go to the note modify page. And here we should make the API call. So I'm going to implement the init state method. Actually, init. Oh, I need to turn this into a stateful widget. And now let's implement init state. Okay. Now I need to reference the node service. All right, now I'm going to import the get it package. Okay, now we can make the API call. Let's say node service dot get node. And here we're getting the node ID through the constructor over here. So I'm just going to say widget, actually widget dot node ID. And then we're going to say then data. And now we should check if the response was successful or not and whatever. So let me just rename this to response, response, and say response dot error. So if we got an error, we should have some kind of an error message we're going to display to the user. So let's say string error message. And let's just say uh, error message is equal to response dot error message. But if we don't get an error message, we should just put in our own and let's say an error occurred all right that should be sufficient enough but if we actually have a note let's just say note and just note and we'll initialize it over here response dot data okay but now there is some further stuff we need to do since we're not displaying this data outright through a widget we actually need to insert the data that we have into text fields so like these ones and the way we're going to do that is through the text editing controller a text editing controller if you're not aware is just an object that you pass to a text field widget or something like that and then you can read and manipulate the data that is put into that object or actually into that widget let me just demonstrate to you so i'm going to create a text editing controller and i'm going to call it title controller but in order to use it we need to create a new instance of it and now in order to use this title controller we just need to copy the name of it and put in the controller property and that's all we have to do and now we can use this title controller to do whatever we want with the data so over here for instance i can say title controller dot text is equal to note dot title 
and that's all I have to do. When I get the note from the API, it's going to put the note title into the text field. And this is also useful for when you're trying to submit a form or something and you need to read something from the text field. We do it the same way, just text controller dot text. So yeah, it's a very neat feature. So now I'm going to create the same controller just for the content. So let's say content controller and put it in over here say content controller dot text is equal to note dot note content all right that's nice but we should also display some kind of loading when we're actually loading up the note so let's just say over here bool and we'll just set it to false by default and now when we start to actually load the note We'll just say set state as loading is equal to true. But when we are actually done with our loading, let's say set state as loading is equal to false. So what we're doing over here, when we start to load our note, we say we are loading. But when we're done, we set this to false, obviously. But let me just move this stuff below the init state super call, just in case. But we also should use this as loading property. So over here I'm going to say if we are loading then display a circu circular progress let's say oh yeah circular progress indicator I just typed that out wrong and if else then we're just going to display the column and if you're not aware this is just an inline if statement we used it over here too so I probably explained it in a previous video so but also I should center this loading indicator just to make this look at least somewhat of a legitimate application so let me save this right here and let's see actually if we are passing in the note id correctly so let me go to the note modify references and go to the note list and yes here we are passing the note id to the note modify page properly from our note list page let me run the app and we'll see if it works. All right, so here we are in the emulator and we see our list of notes screen, which we built out, or actually we didn't build it out, but we hooked it up to the API in the previous video. So let's now click on a certain note and see if it fetches the note correctly. And it did fetch the title correctly, but with the note content, something went wrong. And as I can see, that's what happened in all of these. So let's see what we messed up. Let's go to our notes service. And now the from JSON part, note content, note content. This should be okay. Here it's also note content. I'm not really sure what the issue here is, but we're actually going to use the debugger to figure out what we messed up over here. So let me restart the application. All right. And now when I click on a certain note, we should hit this breakpoint over here. Status code is 200 and the body has note content in it. So that's that's good. Now we should hit this from JSON. Yeah, I really don't see what is an issue here. Let me put a breakpoint here too. Let's see what the map has. It has the note content. Maybe I spelled it out wrong, but I don't think so. All right, so this seems to be good as well. Let's go back over here. So let's go to the note modify page. And here we should hit the breakpoint over here. And here we have response.data and we have note content. And it says, oh, I see what we forgot to do. We had this content controller, but we did not hook it up to the note content text field. So, yeah. So here through debugging, we found a certain issue and this is not scripted or anything. I really genuinely just messed this up. So yeah, this is kind of how I debug my apps if you really were curious. So now let me save this and try to refresh the app. Oh yeah, it already displayed the data now correctly. So yeah, let me just remove the breakpoints. And yes, this is a test note. ABC. So all of these are correct. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. In this video, we pretty much just fetched a single resource from the API instead of like a list. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty similar on how you do a list, but you know, it's still good to cover. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create resources in an API.